Welcome to the Spanish Sierras, a beautiful region created when Northern Africa collided with Europe. This is where adventure begins. I begin in the famous Refugio de Juanar, a stopping place for many travelers wanting to traverse the mountains. It is also a famous location for finding the Ibex. The wild spirit of these rangers. These incredible animals belong to the ruminant family, with large, flexible, almost leathery hooves which give them friction so that they can scale even up the steepest cliffs and rocky outcrops. Usually, they are found in groups of either females or males, but in the rutting season, in the months of November and December, the males are driven to find the females in order to reproduce. This is the most exciting time, because the females may still have offspring from previous years with them, and so large herds of ibex can form. The young ones spend their time with games, training to one day become the dominant alpha male. The Iberian ibex consists of four subspecies, but two of these have already gone extinct, with the latest one, the Pyrenean, disappearing just in the early 2000s. Even a cloning project in 2009 couldn't bring it back. All remaining ibex are threatened by hunting, as well as outbreaks of a disease called sarcopsic mange, which is transmitted by mice. You can see symptoms of this infection if you look closely on the back of the animal, where patches of hair have been lost, and there are scabs that are formed on the skin as the mites burrow into living tissue. Untreated, the animal dies a very painful death. But luckily, the Spanish government has introduced a program to control the disease, by giving the animals chewable tablets which contain medicine to cure the mange, as well as establishing whole buffer zones to act as quarantine in case the animals do get sick. Still, the populations are recovering very slowly, and tourism, as well as urbanization, only adds more pressure. Their seemingly peaceful world faces grave danger. And a lot still has to be done to ensure that these wild spirits do not vanish forever. I adore these animals, but it was time to move on. Here among the olives you find a very interesting ecosystem supported entirely by the trees themselves. When in season, the olive fruit provides food for rodents and a plethora of insects, which itself attracts all the consumers, the carnivores, like your scorpions, spiders, lizards, all of them come here. And that in turn attracts all the apex predators like the foxes and indeed the snakes. But there is something else I want to see first. Not knowing better, you would walk past this. But look, if you see, see the little tunnel going in, we have ourselves a scorpion under this rock, I think. I must be careful to lift it. What? Ooh, wow, look at this guy. He's quite big. Put the rock aside. Look at this guy. Oh, let's see, are you feisty? Oh, yes. Scorpions are nocturnal animals, so during the day, they sleep under rocks like this. If I put him down a second. Let's see, are you going to run off? Are you going to be in a... Oh, don't, don't run off. Hey. Behave yourself, come on. You wouldn't die from a scorpion like this here in Spain, but across the Mediterranean, in Morocco, they have the same species, the common yellow scorpion. And there, for some reason, they actually developed much stronger, much more potent venom in Morocco. Then you can get a muscle cramp or a spasm. And if you have an allergic reaction to venom, that can actually paralyze you, so you'll get shock and could potentially die. It's a serious issue. Look, if I bring him into the sun, you can see why they're called the common yellow scorpion because of that vibrant color, which matches the sand here perfectly. If I grab him again, 
Oh, look, he's grabbing me. <laughs> he's grabbing my finger. Oh, come on, let go, let go. He says, no, I got you, got you. Oh, come on, let go, let go. Come on, you look like a lobster. There you go. Okay, so um, I'll release him back under his rock. I reckon if I put the, him down in here for a second, he can just, yeah, okay, he can just crawl off under the rock there. And then just put this rock back. Oh, when you lift rocks, always just remember to replace them. So the habitat, he can come back, he can hunt in the night. Oh, that's awesome. It's a really good find. another half a meter onto him no problem at all look at that guy see why they're called a the horseshoe whip snake also all this beautiful patterning on the back oh come come if you look on the head just there the eyes have a milky cap they're like white and that's because he's starting to shed as you can see on the sides also of the snake all of this skin is coming off and when snakes shed whoa they get really grumpy. Whoa, calm down. Got my cameraman terrified. Whoa, oh, wow. Look at this, whoa. Whoa, it's a beautiful snake. Oh, okay. Oh, what I'm gonna do, not stress him out too much, he's going to shed anyway. I'm just going to take him to the bushes, back to the tree, to where he was going, and release him there. Just let him go into the shade here, into the shade of the tree, just follow the snake, look at that. Really amazing animal. Let's go find some more. That must have been eroded by water, where well, there was a basin of softer rock and it was eroded until the hard rock remained. Wow, I'll, I need to go get my equipment again, probably put a rope around the tree to go down and see because the snakes could go down there as well for coolness. We're all ready for me to go down into the cave now. The rope is touching the bottom I think. Hope this tree holds. It's a drop. Okay, this is not a good scenario, but I need to go down quickly now into the cave. see the entrance of the cave down there now and this is perfect during the heat of the day like this when it's scorching hot outside the snakes will come down here and we could possibly find them maybe we'll see a snake but unfortunately there's nothing down here so I must keep searching oh man look you can see where I came from from that way and look, I had to climb all these cliffs, and that is where I'm going. Because look, that is a very steep slope. If I show you, whoa, if I show you, see, I'm holding the camera almost 90 degrees high. Wow. So, yeah, I'm trying to climb up this little bit. You can see there's always potential for snakes and other animals to hide in these, maybe scorpions as well. And so, you see all these little cracks. Oh, hey, look. Oh no way, look at this. Look what I just found. Look in that crack. Can you see what I'm looking at? Wow, it's a bat. I think it looks like a pipistrelle bat from here. Isn't it such a small crack? Look at the crack compared to my hand. It's only like a finger length. 
wide. That is exactly why you need to be so careful where you put your hands. I could have stuck my hands in there to grab onto, right? But I've probably been bitten by this guy who's sleeping inside. Oh, okay, hang on. I am really not in a position to do wildlife photography right now. Oh, okay, you can see the crack. The bat is just in there. Bats are crucial for insect control, but their populations have been decimated around Europe, so they're very rare. I'm trying to grip onto because look down there, I have nothing, I have absolutely nothing to grip onto. And if I let go, they're behind me under is a whole cliff face. So I really have no option but to kind of straddle it and be on top of the bat. But look, if you look down, you can see the bat just in there. Oh, I'm trying not to spook him. Look at that, you can see his little face there. It's really cute. See, he's furry. Yeah, I think it's a pipistrelle bat. They're very small. He's sleeping there during the day. He's found himself really good crevices here in the rocks. Oh, okay, about to fall off. But look at that if I do. Whoa! Oh, I am falling off. Okay, look at that. He's so cute. He's sleeping. He has his eyes closed. Hope he doesn't spook. <laughs> he, <laughs> if he decides to fly off now, he'll fly straight into my face. Okay, but hey. Oh. Okay, look at that. Oh, how about that? Ah, uh, I'm literally about to fall. Hang on. Ah, uh, uh, put the camera up. Split. Ah. Uh. Oh, oh, oh. The sun is just rising over the mountain there. All of the animals are starting to wake up. And somewhere in this area, I know there's a viper. Now it's all about looking around and finding it. Yeah, it's gonna be quite a challenge. I've spent a couple of days now walking around this area searching for vipers. I have nothing to show for. It's just as soon as I see a snake, it dashes under the cover or into the crevice, into a crack in the rocks. Impossible to catch or even film because it just happens so quickly. Now it's getting too hot during the day again, so I'm going to wait until the evening. For the rest of the day, I continued searching on my own. But as it always happens, that is when I strike lucky. To my own disbelief, I find the most elusive creature of them all, the Latastus viper. You can see my hands are shaking a little bit because it's such a small snake and it can just spring that much quicker. So, which makes it a little bit harder to work with. You just see him there. It's a really pretty snake. Of course, the tip of the nose is turned upwards just a tiny bit. And that's what gives him his name. Found across Portugal and southern Spain, it is also called a snub-nosed viper. It prefers secluded, rocky outcrops, where it can hunt by both day and night. I'm in a very, quite a desperate position here actually, because you can see, I don't want to take my eyes off him, but you can see just behind me there, that's my rucksack, and behind me is actually a mountain slope, so there's nowhere I can go. He's quite feisty, this little fellow, because he's very young, and so he has a lot of energy. He's warmed up on this rock here, and I don't want him to jump anywhere either because it's quite hard to control a small snake actually you think small snake is easier to handle but it's really not like all vipers like all baby vipers at least he has a quite a prehensile tail look at his tail now see how it's yellowish it's different in color that's because he uses his tail to attract prey to feed on them um, of course he thinks the hook is like a sort of branch or something so I place him back on the ground with it softly and try and to make him calm down a bit. And this is really what you do with any snake to make it calm down. Let's it crawl around, um, crawl as much as it wants to, and then just place it gently on the ground, hoping that it will just calm down. Come on. 
he's just continuing to sunbathe. And if he decides to take a leap on me now, he could, in theory, just tag my hand with him. Just move, move a little bit. He's really a beautiful snake. I mean, look at that head. Let me zoom in. The phone isn't perfect for this, but the upturned nose is really beautiful. A very, very magnificent snake. Never turn away from a snake. But I just want to show you. He's coming back. My eyes is moving. Well, anyway, there you can see the road. And there it's uh, many school children actually come here. They're allowed into the park and to come and play and learn about wildlife, which I think is great because you know the best playground ever for me is being out in nature like this and interacting with wild and sometimes dangerous animals like this little snake. I just wish that this serpent and its habitat remain untamed and undisturbed forever. Such a magnificent creature deserves to live.